please welcome to the stage Executive Director of the Linux Foundation, Jim Zemlin. Welcome to LC3 China. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're really happy to have a big crowd this year. Uh, it is great to be back in China. Uh, this is one of my favorite places in the world to come. Uh, and we have an exciting week for all of you. Lots of great information, uh, lots of great meetings. Uh, you're going to meet interesting people uh, all week here and hopefully learn a lot about open source, a lot about new technology, uh, and make good friends. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, our sponsors are who make these events possible. Uh, in particular, I want to thank our strategic sponsor, Huawei, our diamond sponsors, Alibaba, Intel, Suse, and Tencent, our platinum sponsor, Microsoft, and then our gold sponsors, Baidu, CNCF, Lenovo, NetEase, Pivotal, and Red Hat. Let's give our sponsors a round of applause. A few quick announcements before we get started. Uh, our uh, ex exhibit hall opens uh, next door at 12.10 a.m., uh, or p.m., I'm sorry, during lunch. Uh, lunch is served outside in Hall A as well. Uh, we have a lot of good content this week, so be sure to look at the schedule for the latest uh, sessions on artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud-native development, networking, Linux, and more. Some of our speakers are also holding office hours. Uh, what this means is that you can come and sign up to meet our speakers from all over the world and ask them questions one-on-one -on -one, uh, during the event. Uh, so I encourage all of you to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, the scheduled office hours can be found in the uh, event schedule. We also have a new networking app this year. Uh, it will recommend attendees for you to meet uh, and help you schedule meetings uh, on site. Uh, the details are on the back of your badge. So check out our new networking app. It'll help you meet new people who have common interest. Uh, Wi-Fi information and a link to the schedule are also on the back of our badge. Uh, finally, uh, beef, if you have any questions at all, uh, the Linux Foundation has staff all over the event. Just look for the Linux Foundation shirts uh, and ask them uh, any information you need. Uh, we also have an information desk in the exhibit hall as well. So that's it, and uh, I hope you enjoy the week. Uh, I thought I would start our event by uh, giving you a, a little bit of an update uh, on the Linux Foundation and on open source. And the number one message that I'd like to talk about today is that our world is not a zero-sum game. You know, open source is the world's greatest example of how people can help others while helping themselves at the same time. That there doesn't need to be a winner and a loser, that everybody can win by cooperating together to produce great technologies, right? Everybody can win together, even competitors. In technology, the fiercest competitors work together to help each other while competing at the same time. This is an important thing I want you all to understand, is open source, the movement is all about everyone benefiting together. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what company you're from. It doesn't matter what country you're from. Together, we are making great technology, solving some of the world's most difficult problems, and we are succeeding. Now, how do I know this? How can I be so sure that open source is not a zero-sum game, that all of us can win, even if we're competitors working together? How can I be so sure? Well, because Linux is the example, the existence proof that open source works 
that working together works. Look at this. Linux is the most successful software project in the history of computing. Look at these numbers. It's the number one in internet client with Android. It is, uh, has 90% of the world's public cloud workloads. It has 100% of the high performance computing and supercomputer market, the top 500 markets out there. Linux is the existence proof, the example that together we are stronger than apart. And the Linux Foundation is showing that not just with Linux, but with many, many other technologies. Linux was the beginning, and now we're working across a wide range of different technologies together. Whether it's securing the internet, the Linux Foundation is home to the world's largest certificate authority, Let's Encrypt. It's an easy, free certificate, apt, get, Let's Encrypt. We're home to cybersecurity initiatives like the core infrastructure initiatives. In networking, the Linux Foundation is helping companies here in China, China Mobile, China Telecom, China Unicom, working with other operators from all over the world, whether it's AT&T, Bell Canada, NTT, and others, to automate their mobile networks, their production telecommunications systems through our software-defined networking projects, ONAP, Open Daylight, and many, many more. In cloud computing, we are home to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, how many people here have heard of Kubernetes? People here know Kubernetes? All right, most of you. Hopefully by the end of the week, all of you will know Kubernetes. We're also here home to one of the world's most successful PaaS platforms, Cloud Foundry. In automotive, we have a project called Automotive Grade Linux, creating a next generation automotive experience that is now in production in 20, over 20 million automobiles worldwide. Companies like Toyota, Ford, Hyundai, and others are participating in our automotive initiative, sort of redefining what the software experience in a car is, all through open source. All the code is open. Just last week, Mercedes-Benz announced that they're going to use open source Automotive grade Linux, Mercedes Benz in Germany, for their production commercial vans. These are vans that deliver uh, products all over Germany. Drones come out of these vans and bring the packages that they're delivering to the end receiver. In blockchain technology, we have a project called Hyperledger. Hyperledger is actually being used here in China to track uh, the supply chain for food and other services here in China and all over the world. It's being used to track the diamond supply chain to make sure that people don't use illegal diamonds across that supply chain. It's used in financial services and many, many more. In embedded, we have Zephyr, which is a real-time operating system for tiny embedded devices. The Yocto project, which is the dominant embedded Linux build tool used by the vast majority of companies and individuals creating embedded Linux systems. And then finally, in web technology, we're home to the Node.js Foundation. Node.js, how many people here know Node.js? Pretty much everyone. It's the most popular server-side JavaScript technology used to make app almost every modern web application, mobile application. Uh, it is an incredibly popular open source project. This is an amazing collection of open source technologies. You know, the Linux Foundation, through these projects, is really creating big, big, big results. Today, we have over 13,000 companies from all over the world, from 41 different countries, all working together. The fiercest competitors, all working together, thousands of developers, 
across hundreds of product, projects, creating billions of dollars worth of technology all together. In 2018, the Linux Foundation is adding a new member, a new company, a new organization is joining the Linux Foundation in 2018 every single day. Since January 1st, a new company has joined our organization every single day. Thank you. Thank you. That's the power. That's the power of open source. We have an incredible team here at the Linux Foundation. You know, I'm really proud of the people who work uh, on the projects here at the Linux Foundation. Linus Torvalds, obviously famous. Uh, he wrote, uh, created Linux, wrote it with a lot of other people, uh, but he also was the creator of Git. Brian Bellendorf, uh, I think he's here this week. You can meet him. He is the, uh, one of the founders of the Apache uh, Software Foundation, original creators of the Apache web server. Uh, Dan Kahn, who runs our Cloud Native Computing Foundation, is here this week. He did the first commercial transaction over the internet way back in the early 90s. And then finally, we have a new team member uh, on the Linux Foundation. Uh, Jamie Smith is our new head of communications. Uh, Jamie comes to us. She, uh, her last job, she worked uh, for uh, President Barack Obama as his deputy press secretary. Uh, and she's going to help us to communicate the value of open source to different people, different organizations, and different countries all over the world. It's a great team, and we're very proud of them. And of course, it's not just the Linux Foundation that's growing. Open source is growing everywhere. Today, there are millions of open source developers. In fact, since I created this graphic, the number of developers working on open source has increased from 23 million to 28 million. It's amazing. I think this is maybe six months old. On GitHub today, there are 78 million repositories. Every day, another thousand new open source projects are created and 10 thousand different new versions of existing open source projects are created. That is an incredible trend, and that just keeps going up and up and up, because all of us know the power of working together. The Linux Foundation was also awarded late last year the SD Times Award for uh, Influencers. This is interesting because this award is given from a, a famous publication in Silicon Valley. So this is sort of a big Silicon Valley honor to get this award. But the part I wanted to show you, the part I'm proud about here, is if you look at the companies who got this award in 2017, Apple, Facebook, Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, GitHub, Netflix, Red Hat, Slack, the Linux Foundation were the only nonprofit organization in there, which is amazing. But here's what's even more interesting. Three of the award winners for this very prestigious prize, GitHub, Red Hat, and Linux Foundation, are really open source organizations. That's how important open source is across the world. And of course, I really have to mention GitHub, right? Did everybody see the GitHub purchase by Microsoft? Did anybody see this? It was a big deal, right? So GitHub, Microsoft bought GitHub for $7.5 billion. It's an amazing amount of money. And you know, it's interesting, you know, GitHub is a really, really good tool. And Microsoft is a really, really good developer company. They love developers. They always have since Bill Gates founded Microsoft. And I personally think that, that Microsoft is going to do a good job as a steward of GitHub. GitHub reminds me of a few things. One, Git is such an important technology. I want to thank Linus Torvalds for creating Git because it really changed technology. The second important thing to understand about GitHub is that GitHub created the era of social coding. It was GitHub that allowed 
more developers to very easily collaborate and increase the number of open source developers from a million to now 28 million. So I think Microsoft was smart in buying GitHub. Here's something that's really interesting about GitHub. This is how important it was to Microsoft. The founders of GitHub now own, as a percentage, more stock in Microsoft than the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. It's, a, it's just an amazing example of how important open source is to a company like Microsoft and the world. And of course, at the Linux Foundation, our job is to make the open source engine go faster. At the Linux Foundation, our job is to host great open source projects that companies, companies that all of you participate in, use to make commercial products and services. Whether you're a government organization or a private company, you take open source code, you use it to create a mobile device, a cloud computing service, a website, you name it. And then that creates value in the form of profit. That profit allows companies, like the ones you see here, to assign engineers to work on the project. More engineers work on a project, more code, more improvements that create better products, Better products create more profit. People reinvest back in the project. You get better code, better products, more profits, better projects, more products, better profits. You see how this works? This is a sustainable ecosystem. This is a sustainable financial system where all of us can win. Nobody needs to lose. Everybody can win. And at the Linux Foundation, we think of these like gears. The projects create solutions or products, create value and profit. And our job at the Linux Foundation is to be the best host of open source projects, to be the best open source upstream for a commercial downstream. And so over many years, we've created a methodology a system to help developers create successful open source projects, to identify value, to create a legal framework, to be able to create a governance structure so that developers and business people can make decisions together in a neutral way. We've created systems for developers to promote these projects. We've created tools that allow the ease of new developers to come in and participate in open source projects. We've created marketing methodologies to help promote open source so that more developers and more companies can come into these open source projects. The next step is solutions. And I'm going to talk about today how your job people who consume open source and use it to make products, how you can all get better at that, right? I think it's really important for the Linux Foundation to be good at projects so that all of you can be good at using open source to create interesting products and services. And so one of the things that we're doing at the Linux Foundation is creating guides and tutorials on how to be a good consumer of open source, how to bring code into your company, to change it, to share those changes back so you don't have to maintain the code by yourself, and then continue to participate in these open source communities. We're also creating a series of guides to show all of you how to make money from open source. People always ask me, if open source is free, how do I make money? Well, in 2018, billions of dollars in value, billions of dollars in value is being created in open source. We're creating guides for all of you to show you how you can make money in open source. You see, what we really care about is helping projects 
go from a small unknown project up to a very, very important project that everybody uses every day, something like Linux. That's the goal. If we can get these gears to spin faster, better projects, better solutions, more value, we are going to create more valuable open source projects. And we have lots of examples of this at the Linux Foundation. Here's one example in networking. Global operators need to get ready for 5G. In order to enable all the wonderful value in 5G, the low latency, the faster data speeds, the larger number of users, the billions of connected devices, you have to automate the entire telecommunication network. So at the Linux Foundation, AT&T and China Mobile came to us and said, we want to create a network automation tool in open source together. Even though we're from different countries, different companies, we want to do this together. And so we worked with AT&T and China Mobile, who had two different code bases. China Mobile had created something here in China called OpenO. AT&T had created something called Ecom. We brought them together to create the open network automation platform. We launched that a little over a year and a half ago. And in that period of time, 65% of the world's telecommunications companies are now committed to adopting the open network automation platform. AT&T alone is saying that they're saving over $1.6 billion annually through this technology. It's, a, it's an amazing success of open source. In the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, in 2015, Google came to the foundation and said, we have this great technology called Kubernetes. And we want to contribute it to the open source world. We want to work with our competitors to help developers embrace cloud native development container-based application development, container-based management and orchestration, modern CICD and DevOps workflows. And we went in 2015 with Kubernetes and worked to create a portability layer, a way that containers can be managed across different private and public clouds easily. And you know what? It worked. Three years later, in 2018, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has over 200 members. They have 53 Kubernetes certified service providers. That's 53 private and public clouds that are committed to consistency across different implementations so that when you write a cloud native application, it's easier for you to bring it from one cloud to another cloud. That's a huge accomplishment in open source, and that all came from big competitors, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Alibaba, Tencent, Huawei, others, all working together. IBM, many, many others. Finally, in automotive, as I mentioned earlier, our automotive-grade Linux platform was started by some of the most conservative automotive companies in the world in 2012. And in just a short period of time, in five years, in five years, we are now in 20 million production vehicles. It's an amazing, amazing success story. You know, in 2012, most automobile companies didn't really make much software. Right? Software was new to the automotive industry. And so they were struggling to work on software. What did they do? They leveraged open source to create automotive software. So the message today is, let's get these gears spinning faster and faster and faster. That's why we're here this week. Talk to each other about how we can make good upstream projects that create good downstream products that create value for everyone. That's why we are here this week. And you know, the Linux Foundation 
is very committed to China. This is a country we want to invest in. And we're very, very happy to see that Chinese industry is also investing in the Linux Foundation. And on that note, I'd like to introduce someone to all of you. Uh, we now have, at the Linux Foundation, our newest platinum member, the highest level member of, oops, there we go, of the Linux Foundation, Tencent. Uh, please welcome to the stage Mr. Zhang Yu, who is the newest platinum member of the Linux Foundation. Welcome. <sighs> welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome. Thank you, Vice President at Tencent, our newest member of the Linux Foundation. Welcome. You're, you're now technically my boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, shall we have some work? <laughs> sure. You can speak Chinese even if you would like. Okay. Uh, 不好意思,我用中文说几句吧,首先非常感谢,因为其实从我个人的感受来说, Wadawa 那么实际上腾讯在技术方面也有一些自己的积累现在有一个说法是说所谓的移动互联网已经到了下半场那么也就是说这个跟十年前的局面已经很不一样那么那个时候也许应用还很缺乏我们的用户可能还在生活的非常不方便那实际上十年之后你会发现说这个平台上的应
in Chinese today for all of you. So go to linuxfoundation.cn website. Uh, we have these guides from our to-do group that can teach you and your company how to use open source. Uh, please go ahead and use them today. So with that, I'd like to uh, also announce that the Linux Foundation is working on a project called Call for Code. Speaking of large global problem solving, uh, the Linux Foundation is working on a project called Call for Code with IBM, the United Nations, and many others that is challenging developers to solve big problems around climate change, to produce code to solve problems in order to help with disaster recovery and climate change problems, please go check it out. It's callforcode.org. And, whoop, I snuck it out there. So one of the things I want to show you, how do we get back to this? Pe where's the penguin here? I'm having problems with my slides. We go. No, you're killing my joke. All right, everybody knows that the Linux penguin is black and white, correct? So Linus Torvalds loves black and white animals. And there's the penguin. You're killing me here. Uh, 